friends welcome back to the channel today we got something pretty cool some cool little creative effects within premiere or after effects so i have five clips set out here and what we're going to do is we're going to mask out our subject and then i'm going to show you some ways that you can combine some cool looking effects onto this so this is great for music videos or any other video projects where you want some cool creative popping effects and we're pulling this footage from a recent music video that i shot it's going to be coming out soon we have some nice cinematic looks going on here leave a like comment subscribe do all that good stuff if you do enjoy the content and you want to see the channel grow so starting off with our first clip here we're gonna keep it pretty simple let's start with a rough mask within premiere and then we're gonna switch to after effects uh, i recommend if you are doing masking especially especially subject masking like this you do it within after effects because it's a lot easier to mask there but if you want to do a rough version within premiere it's pretty easy and it's a lot faster so first things first what we're gonna do is i'm gonna hold down alt on my keyboard and i'm just going to drag this clip up just like that and then with this duplication here i'm gonna go ahead and start masking it now what you can do is you can either go over to your effects and just look up a crop and drag the crop on or you can click on your clip here go up to your effect controls and then you can come down to opacity and you can just start masking it through the opacity so what i'm going to do is within premiere i'm going to draw a rough little mask you can click this click the squiggly key on your keyboard to make this full screen just like that if you guys are absolute beginners or you don't have that much experience masking but you do with other things i recommend one of the first videos you should watch from my channel is my how to mask videos i have a lot of really useful useful stuff and masking is really one of those essential things that you guys have to learn as a video editor we're gonna be doing a lot of mask related things but we're not focusing just on the masking with this the point of this video is to show you some cool creative stuff that you can do on top of that masking now this is great but if we press play then this mask will start moving away so what we need to do is we need to come into our effect controls and we need to keyframe the mask path and what that basically you're going to do is going to create an animation where the mask is moving along with the video so if you hover over here it'll say toggle animation go ahead and click that to start the keyframe and you'll see the keyframe will be created here and now what we're going to do is we'll drag along first let me click and select our mask so you can see as i press play the mask is just going to stay there so you can go frame by frame and move it or if you just want to do a rough mask in premiere like how we're doing um, we can just move maybe like every five frames so we'll start here and then we'll just kind of adjust these joints just like this and then we'll use feathering to kind of cover up our sloppiness and like i said it's a lot better to use after effects i'm going to show you the after effects method after this as well as i'll show you how to do it with rotoscoping which is probably the uh, one of the best ways to be able to create these behind the back effects okay so we made our change and as you can see we created keyframes from making every change so we'll just keep moving along all right, so we have a rough little adjustment here for our mask. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually bump up the feather. So if we hide this bottom layer here, we click this. This is what our mask top layer is looking like. Something simple like that. And essentially what we're doing here is we're creating that masked layer so that now we have this isolated and we can put something behind this layer. So for this first clip, the first example I'm gonna show you, this one is very simple. You take your bottom background layer again, you hold down alt and you duplicate it. And then you can go up here to motion or even scale and you can just bump down the scale. So what we're taking is literally just a shot of the video and placing it behind our subject, just like that. So you can get some cool looking stuff here, kind of like you're looking into a, a mirror. I'm gonna go ahead and crop those black bars to maybe see what that looks like. And you don't have to exactly use the same clip. What you can do is you can take a different clip that you shot and place this behind your subject. Of course, you can add any other effects onto this. That's what's great about this video. I'm showing you five main general effects that you can do with this, but through those five different areas, there's so many different things, endless opportunities you can do to build off of that. Again, like I said, you can take a different clip, drag that in so that it's behind our subject, and then of course, scale that down. You can even duplicate more of these and maybe move them around. If you're looking for some cool preset plugin effects, check out my website. Really affordable and cool stuff that can up your game in Premiere and After Effects. So check that out as well if you want some of those little flashy things to add on to these methods. But that is method number one. So here's what it looks like with two little duplications in there. What I did was just hold down Alt for that original and then just made a little cut so it pops in a little bit later. Let's move on to clip number two. Now for option number two, this one is pretty similar to option number one, but instead of taking this same scene and putting it behind your subject we're going to take our mask out subject duplicate it and place it behind our own subject again and this time instead of duplicating this bottom clip and then scaling it down like we did in that first example we're going to go ahead and take this clip of the mask itself that we made we're going to hold alt and then drag this down to duplicate it 
now if you take motion and just move this around you'll see this is what it looks like so you can do some cool stuff here what you can do is you can maybe just offset it a bit and get this cool little and just get this pop and clone such as this and then you can add some effects on top of that whatever you may like maybe you don't want it to start as a little pop in thing maybe you want it to slide out in an animated way you can select your clip go up to your effect controls and then keyframe your position and scale move to the end of the shot and then move your position over a tiny bit just by dragging this slider and that way you'll see a smooth slide out such as this now if this feathering is getting a little bit too annoying for you what you can do is maybe take this mask expansion here and just lower that so having that rough mask is why i recommend using after effects and like i said the next clip will show you how to do it with some after effects masking methods so either a go so either go in here click on your mask and try to adjust as well as you can mess around with the feathering and the mask expansion those are your best options for really cleaning that up let me show you a third little alternate method for this subsection let me show you a third little alternate method we're going to go ahead and get rid of the animation again so we'll just turn off these keyframes and we'll move it over here just so it pops in just like that now with this what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply a distortion effect now if you want some cheap distortion effects in my effects pack 2.0 which contains a bunch of really great presets there is a whole distortion folder slash subsection within that. You'll see distortion presets, which you can apply onto here. Now you can directly drop these distortion presets on and get this cool kind of um, mirror-like warping that goes on. Or what you can do is you can duplicate the little pop-in um, freeze frame just like that hold up and drag and then you can apply these distortion presets on top of that duplication and that way you get some real craziness going on here just like this which i really like how that looks i think it really gets this cool kind of like spider web sci-fi effect and of course there are a bunch of different ones this one is the donnie darko liquid one which is cool it gets this cool kind of rgb this one is doors of perception which is a more kind of um, rapid fire if you have any other kind of distortion um, plugins or presets those ones are always real great i love how the distortion looks with this method it's one of my favorite for putting something behind and using that distortion so let's remove my presets like i said those are available within effects pack 2 link will be down below if you're interested let's go ahead and place on something like sapphire distortion and you can do this with my presets as well what i really want to show you is just some keyframing stuff you can do so i'm going to use a plugin distort from the sapphire pack and then go in my effect controls and you can do this like i said with any distort with any distort preset or plugin just going in here and creating some animations or complete customizations for how you really want this so so let's put this at zero to start start the keyframe, move it forward, and then we'll pump it up like crazy. So we really get to see how that distortion takes place. This one also is super cool. And then, like I said, you can combine any different effects onto this. So just to kind of make it pop more, since this is a dark scene, um, we'll just add some little flicker, play that out and bam crazy cool effect just like that another cool thing to do if you are using distortion or in particular i'm doing this with my distortion presets you can actually hide the bottom layer which shows the face and just keep a distorted layer here and what you get is this crazy warping of the background behind your subject and you can even see his face kind of peer in from there these are the types of videos that i love to make because you can build off it so much and really add on so much so like i said we're going to show you how to mask within after effects with this one just to show you and remind you guys in case you do want to have a better form of masking to really fully pull this off and have the subject completely masked out for your disposal so what we'll do is hold down alt we will duplicate this clip and then i will right click on it and click replace with after effects composition to create that dynamic link so now anything we do to this clip within after effects it will show and pop up within premiere okay so our clip is now within after effects and here's the reason why i say after effects is better for this is because you have better ease of use with your masking tool it's a lot easier to use a lot more precise than adobe premiere adobe premiere like i said is good to just get those quick and easy ones like maybe if you're doing the distortion method that i just showed you using masking in premiere is good for that because it's going to be distorted anyway you don't need to see the full extent of everything but if we really want to mask out the subject doing this way is a lot better so there's two ways we can mask within after effects first way is we create our default mask using our masking tool so press g on your keyboard or click up here and then we kind of follow the outline of our subject 
and, and I really recommend if you guys are struggling with the masking part if you are beginners to check out my masking tutorials they are definitely game changers and will really help you so here is this just masked out you can select the clip and press M to bring up your mask and show it and you can change this to subtract to take it away add to take away the background or none just to show the mask but don't really do anything with it so what we're gonna do is take this clip click control D on it to duplicate it and we'll click M on the top clip as well so for this top one we're going to change the mask to add and then this one at the bottom what you can even do is just delete the mask so think of it like this if we hide our bottom layer this is our normal masked layer and if we hide the top layer this is just normal with our subject and the background now let's hide our bottom layer so we're only seeing our subject and I'm going to select it and I'll click this button so you don't see this mask outline. Now you'll see we have this really rough edge here and it just kind of looks like a what it, it kind of just looks like a cutout to make that a little bit better. We can open up this mask option there and then we can just bump up this feather and you'll see that that'll blend a little bit better like that. And then you can also take the expansion, maybe lower it a bit try and find something like this and we're gonna have to do the same thing here so bring back your mask to see it like this if you see as I drag along the mask is moving away so what we can do is two different things um, we can keyframe the mask path and just move frame by frame using page up page down and move this every time or maybe every five frames we can move it around like how we did in Premiere or there's another option we can right click our mask click track mask and then it'll pop up our tracker and we can just click play and see if that does a good job for us usually especially since this is low light I wouldn't really trust that um, depending on if you're doing something if you're masking something easy it might but as you can see it's already messing up here so I would not count that as an option for now and then our third option is rotoscoping and rotoscoping is a, it still takes time but it's probably one of the best ways of masking so our rotoscope is successfully finished what we're going to go to is we're going to go ahead and take our selection tool go back into our comp and the background will automatically go away so looking good and what we can do here is since this is our roto layer we can control d to duplicate it and then in our bottom layer of our duplication you can go ahead and just delete the roto off the bottom so it'll just bring up the mask and essentially now we have the same exact thing we have a layer on top which is just masked out with our rotoscoping and then we have a layer on the bottom which is our background on to method number three now that i showed you masking and after effects so for this behind the back method we're going to put some sort of film overlay here or any kind of overlay and we'll talk more on this some of the ones i like are film leaders i'll show you some examples here now you can download or purchase the now you can download or purchase these on many places over the internet I'm planning on making my own little film leader creative pack soon which will be pretty cool if you don't want to use a film leader you want to use any kind of overlay just check out my website we have a bunch of free VHS royalty free overlays you guys can get for free we have a bunch of green screen overlays you can get for free if you don't really know where to go and you just want like a quick download website down in the description sorry I'm plugging it so much in this video but it definitely would help for something like this so so once you've gotten your hands on one of these film leader clips in here you can place that between your two clips so like I said your subject clip here and then your background clip you can even rename that and then what you're gonna want to do is take your film leader clip make sure that that's scaled to your frame size so go to transform and go to uh, fit to comp and you can also do this within Premiere you just right click on a clip scale to frame size but anyways once this is here you're gonna want to actually click toggle switches and modes and just change this to screen or maybe something like overlay just change the blending mode so that it'll fit onto the screen just like that and that looks pretty cool so you get these awesome film leaders behind the subject and because of that rotoscoping we get that ma nice mask so that nothing is actually affecting the subject now of course if you wanted to you can actually just change the blending modes and put it over top of the subject but it'll cover his face this is just a real nice clean effect that you can throw over there and like I said you can do this with any kind of things you doesn't have to be a film leader there's so many different overlays you just need to know the masking and then changing the blending modes to get it in the correct way so that is a nice little example let's move on to our next creative example and this one is for a more kind of cartoonish look we're gonna add some little animation lines. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to footage crate for this and of course you can find this on YouTube there's a bunch of different ways but this is a great website and I promoted this a bunch before this isn't promoted itself but it's still a great website that I always talk about um, where you can find some really great elements to use for your videos and I'm just going to look up animation and try and find some cool little 
um, graphics like something like this would be cool to place behind the subject but this is more what I'm looking for things like this like this anime energy burst etc you can use a lot if you have a premium account you can get a lot of these there's also a bunch of free ones so you guys could still utilize this match the footage as well let's try out this one that one looks pretty sick especially if we um, took the cropping of it especially if we go and pimp out these bottom effects maybe with some preset effects let's drop a little glow from effects pack 2.0 on here so we added glow from effects pack 2.0 and then on that we'll just bump up the exposure to make that glow even better so some crazy stuff going on there and what i'm going to be showing you in this one is just any kind of any kind of 3d or green screen thing usually it looks really cool with this sort of effect so first let me show you a quick little 3d thing if you guys do have element 3d you could do that so let's bring in a giant skull and the reason why i like doing it this way and uh, with element 3d like i said if you do have it or cinema 4d is because you get the full you get the full creative control over what you are placing behind the subject so i'm going to open up element and then from element let's open up a little 3d model i'll open one from my 3d starter pack we'll go into the obj's here and then i'll just open up this skull obj okay, and whenever i'm importing it i'll just make sure use auto normals is checked click ok here and now we have a skull um, within element 3d which we can bring in here so let's go ahead and maybe apply a little material from this uh, video copilot texture pack or any other texture pack for that matter so maybe something like chrome i think looks pretty cool and for this to work you have to make sure that the layer is behind our subject so we'll place it behind let's go to our world transform and take our world scale bump that all the way up what's great about this is you can actually animate this to rotate etc so even take like a color balance hls effect drop it on there and then um, keyframe this so that way once we play it through you'll have the skull like changing colors and if you want to animate it, let's just take our X rotation here, drag a bit, and then something like this. So that's a pretty cool little 3D effect going on there. If you want, you could use 3D camera tracker so that that's like tracked into place, which would also be pretty cool. So you don't have element 3D, et cetera, et cetera. Hop over onto my website or find some free download green screen place. Go to video products. Same as with the VHS pack, sky replacement pack. You have your green screen pack where you can download this where you can go ahead and download this 100% free, all royalty free stuff found on the internet. I'm gonna work with, place it between our subject and our background. Now we're gonna need a little color key effect just to get rid of that green. And you're also going to want to maybe just bump the color tolerance so that's all gone like that. And looking good, now we can, now what we can do is grab the cross scale it up to like that and then the last method i want to show you guys is similar to the vhs overlay but essentially what it is is just having vhs instead of that normal duplicated screen so we have our two background duplications here what you could do is delete those and bring in color mats or just placeholders for the vhs i like to bring in a transparent video and that'll serve as my little placeholder for the vhs so then i can apply universe vhs effect just like that do something like blank tape Kind of make that smaller i think that looks pretty cool i've seen that used a few times in music videos but you can really get some cool looks with that in itself i like this one a lot because it really does give this kind of like geometric um textured look or if you don't have this vhs plugin you can use that vhs um, pack which is free on my website and just overlay the clip in between here but either way i think this vhs looks really great the behind the back effect that i've been showing you guys i feel like introducing you guys to different ways and experimentation of using different effects different ways to do things is just a good way to keep those creative juices flowing so that you guys are never sitting there with a project completely stumped on what to do so some different little examples i'm gonna cut this up and you guys would have seen this at the beginning let me know if you like videos like this covering a lot of stuff that i talked about before but just combining things in different ways and i really want to bring content like that the old style from this channel of just showing you these creative music video effects in different ways different combinations i'm also planning on a new video which i think will help a lot it's a video dedicated to making your edits more unique and different things and habits that'll help you make your editing more unique so it can stand out thank you guys so much for watching the video thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one